Insider. Busy Friday. That means Jeff Sintel for us. UG recruiting stuff. We'll get to that. But uh, Jeff, it appears as I'm doing the show live here, Georgia, if I'm getting the reports here correctly, has added a player, a player that had been talked about at one point in time, the Stanford tight end, Ben Yurichik, on his way to UGA. Um, I sort of half joked before you came here, you know, coming by, by way of Stanford, sort of that Bay Area of California, going to be easy to sort of draw those Brock Bowers comparisons, which is totally unfair. But in a real way, your chick's a little bit better of a playmaker than perhaps some people I think you've probably given him credit for. First of all, is this true? Is this real? Is he coming to Georgia? And second of all, if he is, what does he bring to the table here? Uh, Brandon, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Brandon, if I know you, you probably immediately thought, was that Terry Bussey's scholarship that Georgia was holding? And then yeah. your set comes in here. I know how you try to analyze everything, my man. Sure. Um, I would say for all, there's a portion of your audience, Brandon, I bet that would know the name Kurt Rambis. Um, another California guy, big power forward for the Lakers, uh, mid-80s, early 80s, whatever. That's kind of what I what I kind of parallel uh, Benjamin Urasek to um, grad transfer. So obviously uh, the rules will apply. He was in the portal well before the deadline. Uh, he visited Georgia, I believe the second weekend of January. Um, and a lot of people are going to fixate on the wrong things with Urasek here. Like Urasek only had 16 catches for Stanford last year, but the previous two seasons, he was a workhorse, like 45 catches, 49 catches. I think the big thing to think about is 6'4", 245 or so. Brandon, he was a 2020 high school recruit, came out the same year that Carson Beck and Tate Ratledge did, for example. So you got a really physical dude there. You look at that picture. You he got looks just like, right like, I didn't know where you were going with the Kurt Rambis thing. I didn't know if you meant he's just going to be a role player at Georgia or whatever else. He looks just like sort of a Kurt Rambis uh, style with the uh, – the glasses there it almost looks like he even has the like the tape on the middle there. So, uh, very, listen, I am certainly of a certain age. I remember Kurt Rambis. I would say you're thinking late '80s here, not just you know early to mid '80s because I don't really have a living memory of the early '80s, thankfully. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, the the glasses here, you get a little bit of a Kurt Rambis, you know, vibe going there, almost like a throwback to like Rodrigo Blankenship, I'd say too, with the uh, specs there. So, uh, I sort of see where you're coming from. With the the Rambus comparison, uh, I, I, I was not quite following that to begin with. But now that you see the the, the face, and by the way, great job by our team of folks here on, on uh, video live here. But now I sort of see where that's coming from. You got the glasses there on Urasek, obviously a very studious young man, which means I'm sure he fit in very well in Stanford. Yeah, very studious. Well, first of all, I believe that picture's back from his high school days at Bakersfield. Anybody. Here's the name Bakersfield. They'll think about the great Kurt Russell, Robin Williams movie, The Best of Times. But like for for Ra the Rambus reference is a little is a little dated visually. But what I see him is a very strong role player, glue guy, dirty work. Brandon, let's face it. It's it's Oscar Delp. And then it's a bunch of freshmen and sophomores for Georgia at tight end next year. Todd Hartley realized that he had kind of a void there in terms of you know, a big masher physical body that can also go catch the ball. The other thing I like about the Rambus parallel, Brandon, because um, I guess we could call him Kirk Clark Kent today for the modern viewer or whatever, but he was a baller back in the day. His high school years, Brandon, I was telling some folks about this a couple of weeks ago. I believe we said that we we're talking about him on before the hedges when we brought this up, but this is a guy tied in big body Stanford brain, checks a lot of boxes so he's never allowed to miss a coverage read or anything like that but he was his high he was his high school classifications basketball player of the year now brandon think about that for a second bakersfield california you got a tight end prospect he was only like a three star or a four star coming out of high school but he was the his high school associations high school basketball player of the year he was a rambus guy getting a lot of rebounds, a lot of putbacks, playing a lot of good interior defense in the paint. And he's going to bring a lot of that mindset along, a lot of that skills now to the SEC. But he also was named his high school association area overall athlete of the year for what he did on the basketball court and the football field. So this is a guy, and not, a lot of people are going to say, oh, he only had 16 catches last year. To put that in perspective, that's about what Dejon Edwards had in the Georgia offense last year, or maybe Makai Muse. But I, I think that's a false positive there with his game 
not only I, I, I hate to tell all those people that want to get NIL with Benjamin, but he doesn't currently look like that with the glasses anymore. Okay. So there goes the Rex Specs NIL deal or something like that. But um, he had back to back catches of 40 plus receptions, back to back seasons of 40 plus catches in the Pac 12. His junior year, he was second team all Pac 12. So getting a little bit better player than what his stat line for 2023 screams. So you're